Okay. So see this word? Trust. I want you to grab a pencil or a pen. I have extra pencils if you didn't bring one. And on that perception page, at the bottom, write down every synonym, every word that could mean the word trust to you. There's no right or wrong answers. I want you to write down every word that comes to mind when you think of the word trust. Okay, let's just take another minute and finish up. Okay, so we have about 50 people in the room. And what I'd like you to do now is with your table mates, if you haven't introduced yourself to each other, now's a good time to do that because I see a few people are shaking hands. Pauline, have a seat anywhere you'd like. We'd like to make sure that you know the other people that are at the table. So if there's a face you don't recognize, don't be embarrassed. Just stretch your hand out and introduce yourself. Do you know everybody at this table? Okay. So now that you've gotten to meet each other and your best friends, I want you to compare your list to the other people at the table and I want you to have one consolidated list when you have multiple words that more than one person pick. So for example, if two of you on your list have three words that are the same, put that on a separate piece of paper. So we want to know in the end how many words more than one person had at the table? Is there any word that everyone had? So you want to look on your list for the word that everyone had. Okay, did everybody uh, complete the counts? Okay, a couple more minutes, seconds. Anybody still need more time to tally their counts? Okay, so by a show of hands, is there any table, any table where everybody had picked one word? Okay, all right, so we have three, three tables. Any table that, uh, let's say, three to four of the six people had one word? Yeah. Okay, okay, so that's more. Was there any table where two words were picked by everybody at the table? Not by everybody, okay. Any table where two words were picked by three or four people? Okay, we have one, one two, three, four, five, six tables. Any table that obviously not everyone picked three words, but three to four people picked three words? Two. Any table? Th four. Okay. Any table where s there were three or four people had four words. One table. Okay. Any table? Five words. Okay. So, by a show of hands, by a show of hands, how many people had five words or more on their list? Okay. How many people had six or more words on their list? Seven. Eight. Nine. Anybody have ten? Yes? Anyone? Anyone have ten? Okay. Nine. Nine different words. When I asked you what that meant, right? A synonym for that word. Nine. 
So can you imagine if we put out a policy and we say, we trust everyone to follow this policy, right? You've got nine definitions for that word, nine synonyms, nine different meanings. So what do you think happens when you have a staff meeting and you use any terminology? You are assuming the word you use, everybody has a common reference for. I picked a five letter easy word that's on every dollar bill, right? Everybody, everybody's familiar with this word. No one said, I don't know what that word is. Everybody knew how to spell it. It's the interpret, thank you. It's the interpretation of that word. So we use words to express what we want to get accomplished, when we want to encourage people, when we want to discipline people, when we want to question people because we don't understand, we need more information. So you can imagine how many words make up a sentence, right? Five to ten words, depending on how long you want to write your sentence. And if every one of those words has a potential for, at least among four of you, nine interpretations, try getting through that sentence. Forty-five meanings for all the words in there. And you wonder why people don't follow policy, or why they don't understand something, or accuse you of not communicating effectively. You see how easy it is? So now we have to talk about styles of communication because you know yourself and you might know your spouse or your significant other or your partner or your children or your parents, but your world is much broader than that. You have these things called workmates, coworkers, bosses, subordinates, elected officials, and then all the people in your private life you do business with, right? The real estate broker, the hairstylist, the nail salon, the car mechanic, the furniture store, the, v, the uh, electronic repair shop where you have to communicate and it has to be effective to get something done. It seems when it comes to us spending money, we ask clarifying questions, don't we? Oh, it's going to cost that much? Why is it going to cost that much? What do I get for that? Do you guarantee your work? Is there a warranty? How long is it going to take? If I pay you more money, do you get it done faster? How many ask those kinds of questions when they are taking hard-earned cash out of their pocket and giving it to someone. Most of us, right? Do we do that in the workplace? Oh, you want, you want, you want a new design? Okay. <laughs> you, wanna, you want a uh, purchase order done? Oh, okay. You want to post this to the website? Okay. <laughs> so start thinking about the way you run your life because you're all successful. You wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be working for our department and you wouldn't have money in the bank and you wouldn't have a plan for the future if you didn't in your private life think of all those things. And you owe it to yourself to bring that to the workplace. So I have something I can read but I'm going to hold off just a few minutes about the marriage between your private life and your public life and how to make happiness in both places. But we'll save that for just a little bit later on. So our next exercise, if you turn the page, you will see there are style indicators. So right here in front of you is a style indicator. It's a columned sheet and it asks you at the top, please place a check by each word that is really like you. Add the total number of checks in each column. The four numbers at the bottom of the page are your style indicators. So just go down the column and check what applies add up the checks in the bottom, and then we'll move forward. Any questions? No question is a dumb question, except in basic training. Okay, this is not a test exclusively for engineers or accountants, so <laughs> everybody, uh, everybody good? Anybody need a few more seconds? Okay, by a show of hands, how many people have the highest number in the column brown? Brown, brown, okay. 
All right. Hands down. How about the next color, which is red? Thank you. How many people by a show of hands have the highest number in red? <laughs> One. Okay. And for blue, how many people had blue? Okay, it looks like the majority had blue. And what about the last color, green? Okay, fair number, fair number. All right, so let's start the lowest number, red. Red, make your own kind of music. Signals red tends to project. Fast, dynamic, energetic, exciting, nonlinear, playful, flexible, humorous, creative, fun, and an adventurer. Okay, the next color. What was our next highest number? Do we have a lot of browns? Show of hands for browns again. Okay, brown. Signals brown tend to project. Their motto is just do it. <laughs> Direct, dutiful, decisive, practical, fast paced, structured, disciplined, accountable, bottom line, likes to lead, action focused, results oriented, builder, achiever, chain of command, on time and on task. Okay, that are the Browns. Next, I think we had uh, green was uh, the next category. How many greens again? Raise your hand, please. Okay, kind of tied with the Browns. Green, look before you leap. Signal green tends to project. Factual perfectionist, plans, researches, analyzes, thoughtful, literal, exact, prepared, theoretical, accurate, sequential, logical, strategic, quality focused, thorough, and cautious. And lastly, blue. Let's see those blue. Let's see a blue. Okay, blue. Signals blue tends to project. Their motto, let's work together. Okay, non-confrontational, giving, avoids conflict, relationship building, sensitive, friendly, supportive, wants to get along, honest feelings important, team-oriented, helpful, amicable, picks up subtleties, considerate, people-oriented. Okay, so before you turn the page, just a few more details, I'm going to have in turn somebody I pick from each color group here by yourself so you get to read that um, and I think we had a green over here who was the green do we have a green and you guys work together that's a great couple okay so before you turn the page and read some individual stuff just be patient and we're gonna start out uh, okay if you start first Nice and loud? No, read, read, the, read, uh, read a few things off the back. You don't have to read everything, but I can read fast, but I think you'll get tired of my voice. Okay. Okay. <coughs> when communicating this style of person is often flamboyant, dramatic, and energetic, they frequently tell jokes or stories. They like testimonials and creative examples that tend to overgeneralize the effects for effects. They're bored by sequentially highly technical presentations. They often stray from the point of meanings and are non-sequential presenters. They like humor, creative ideas, options, and upbeat, fast-paced presentations. Very good. How about a round of applause? <laughs> good job. Good job. Our next category, I think, was the Browns, right? Okay. You. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thank you, Bridget. And before we get to the blues, which was the large group, we still have the, gr uh, the greens. So who has the green card? Adam? With communicating in this style, the person is logical, sequential, and detail-oriented. They often give historical data and discuss process. They tend to communicate literally and factually. They often understate emotions and appear reserved. They like advanced materials and accurate, thorough presentations. 
They need time to process information and are the slowest of all styles to make decisions. Okay. Thank you. And Merdad, tell us about the blues, the majority of people in the room, please. The blues signals, uh, when communicating in this style, the person often asks how others uh, will be affected and whether they are being included in the decision-making process. They like to chat and form a personal connection before getting on task or discussing the business at hand. They often emote and present things in terms of feelings. They tend to clam up if they sense honest uh, hostility or rudeness from others. They like people-oriented presentations. Thank you very much. A round of applause for all our speakers. <laughs> now you get to turn the page and look at your particular style assessment, and you will see on the top strengths, weaknesses, and then the blue style assessment by other styles, strengths and weaknesses that other people see you as, and then some suggestions on the bottom to help you be more successful. Take a few minutes and look at that for your color. A barbed wire fence carving on a hillside, cutting holes in the midday sun, like a postcard framed in a windshield covered in dust. I love the rhythm of an old gray black top. 33's just whistling by. Steer the wheel one handed on a two lane, hugging that line. I got the windows down, no one else around singing. Summertime hay fields just been cut. I got the windows down. Way. So now that you've had a few moments to look over, you can see when you look at the strengths column, every one of these colors. Hi, everybody. Every one of these colors has strengths, right? So that's the positive. But with the positive comes weaknesses. And it's important to kind of recognize some of the weaknesses. You may identify with some of these weaknesses. You may not. But it's important to recognize some weaknesses within your style indicators. But interesting enough, when you go to the middle of the page, it talks about strengths and weaknesses that other people see in you. So, for example, under the blues, people see you as a caring, sensitive, good listener, perceptive, consensus builder, blah, 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 blah. But they also see those weaknesses as they can easily talk you into stuff. You know, you waste time, you're easily distracted, you might whine too much, be self-absorbed, possibly gossipy, might hold a chip on your shoulder, maybe you're indecisive, everything's a crisis. Just, just pointing this out, not saying they all are applicable, but this is a perception other people may have about your particular communication style and then there's some suggestions on the bottom that can help you in your color group that you identified with to be more successful and I'm sure we can all learn and all improve ourselves so nothing wrong with tips on the bottom and then it's got a couple of funny messages you know messages to you in that color group and then messages from blues to everybody else so I hope everybody's had at least a chance to review for their color group you can take this with you, and when you figure out someone you either work for or works for you or with you is a different style than you, it may help you with your communication skills. A little humor on the colors on the back of the card. We'll start again with red. Red uses sayings like, trust me, let's party, chill out, whatever. <laughs> Famous reds include Amelia Earhart. 
Robin Williams, Martin Luther King Jr., Ernest Hemingway, Whoopi Goldberg, Goldie Hawn, Jackie Chan, Ted Turner, P.T. Barnum, Mark Twain, Mae West, Crocodile Dundee, he's dead, Eddie Murphy, and Dolly Madison. Okay? A song, a red song example, Footloose by Kenny Loggins. Next, we had the green, right? Or was brown the next group? Okay. Raise your hands again, Brown. Oh, I see less hands going up, it seems. Nobody wants to identify. Hi. Okay, Brown. Brown sings, do it now. Read my lips. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just do it. No whining, fish or cut bait. Famous Browns, Shirley Chisholm, Winston Churchill, Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders, Lee Iacocca, Golda Meir, first Prime Minister of Israel, Captains Kirk and Picard. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> General Patton. <laughs> Bruce the Boss Springsteen. Hillary Rodham Clinton. Former First Lady. Rudolph Giuliano. H. Ross Perot and John Wayne. Brown song example, Get Over It by the Eagles. Okay, then we had Green. All right. Green, Green sings, let's do it right the first time. A stitch in time saves nine. Learn from the mistakes of the past so history does not repeat itself. Famous Greens, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Edison, Gandhi, Albert Einstein, Madame Curie, Sigmund Freud, IMP, David Letterman, Deepak Chopra, Colin Powell, Bill Gates, Leonardo da Vinci, and Jacqueline Kennedy, another first lady. Green song example, The Long and Winding Road by the Beatles. <laughs> and finally, Blue. Show of hands for the blues. Okay. Blue sings. I think they stole this from Zaki. Toge together we can do more. <laughs> Come together. <laughs> Can't we all just get along? And my favorite, we can work it out. <laughs> Famous blues, Mother Teresa, Paul McCartney, Princess Diana, rest in peace, Bill Cosby, Oprah Winfrey, Phil Donahue, Florence Nightingale, Cesar Chavez, Joan Baez, Jay Leno, Richard Simmons, and Laura Bush, another first lady. <laughs> Blue song example, Come Together by the Beatles. Okay. So how do our perceptions and character traits all come together? Stephen Smith, author and lecturer on egonomics, what makes ego our greatest asset, has some insights on how to blend the two and what he refers to as ego. Some interesting stats that go with that. 2,200 businesses open daily. 2,100 also fail. 90% of new products fail too. To be successful, remember it's not your idea against others, it's the we against something big. How do we get the best ideas supported and move forward? Answer, less focus on function and more on big picture stuff. For us as LADOT workers and managers, it's our stakeholders in the end. So you've seen a sea change in the organization from the top working its way down or from the bottom with our new hires working its way up a sea change in the organization about trying to get the best ideas supported and focusing not so much on the function but on the big picture. We've moved to active transportation from a very vehicle-centric organization and we are incorporating and recognizing everybody at one point or another is all of the different modes of mobility that we are pushing or encouraging or helping to build the right infrastructure to make the city safer. So you've all been part of a sea change. And with rotations, with promotions, with other opportunities, you're not pigeonholed in one function, one focus, one myopic viewpoint. And by interacting with your coworkers in other work sections and in other projects where we pull together teams like we did for People Street and Vision Zero and the Reseda Protected Bike Lanes and you know, the Fig, Fig Street, the, the Broadway dress rehearsal, all of those things demanded participation from a variety of groups and disciplines within the organization. And that is so different than what we did 10 years ago when I came here. 
and people were trapped and locked into one thing. And if you weren't part of that one thing, you were kind of not cast aside, you were tolerated. And that's all changed in our organization, and you're part of this sea change. Whether you're close to retirement, older like I am, or you're one of the very new people who showed up this week and we wondered, who are you? You know, brand new, fresh meat, brand new blood. <laughs> Okay, ego is just as much a reason for success as it is for failure. You just need to recognize how and when to use it effectively. Humility of the hundreds of companies that this guy, Stephen Smith, studied, the ego, economics guy, for what makes a successful company, the very top 11 had leaders recognized for humility in surveys. I used to work for a general, and of course, he got all the accolades. And every time he stepped up to the podium to accept an acolyte, he never took it for himself. He always thanked all the other people underneath him. He had humility, and the troops loved him. People who communicate effectively, compassionately, and humanely, they were on top, like this department is becoming again, widely respected top to bottom. In the end, we have to recognize genetic personality fingerprint. And you did that today in this short exercise. You have certain personality characteristics that have been brought to you or developed throughout your childhood as a young adult and into adulthood. They're not going to disappear, and they manifest themselves in what the things are that you checked off. In the end, motive doesn't necessarily change, but we can maintain our intelligence, self-respect, and genuine confidence. So I promised you a little light ending. We have about 10 minutes. I just highlighted a, a co-worker of mine shared this with me, and it was uh, entitled, How to Fall in Love with Your Work. And there's an author named David White. He wrote a book called The Three Marriages. And it reminded this uh, co-worker of mine just how much art informs life. In the book, uh, the author posits that we all have responsibility for three marriages in our lives, our inner selves, with our loved ones, and with our work. Because you should love yourself, and you should love the people that you surround yourself with. And you don't necessarily have to love the people you work with, but it sure helps if you like them a lot. Separating those marriages, he says, destroys the foundation of happiness we deserve. But when we embrace those three marriages in an integrative way, we can bring our best selves to each of them. So, several points that he wrote, six simple ones. I don't think I have to go into big explanations for each one. The first point is know yourself. Know yourself. Understand your skills, passions, and values. Exhibit behaviors that align with those values. Hold your organization and your teams to a high standard. No whining. When climbing the corporate ladder or scaling the jungle gym of their careers, leaders, like many of us, landed in roles they didn't expect or covet. You think Salida ever dreamed she'd be sitting down here working with us after a, you know, being up in San Francisco, loving her job? You don't know. When climbing the corporate, okay, I said that. Um, don't complain about assignments. Look for what there is to learn and set out to use your passions to transform your job into a passionate, fun experience. Rethink the ordinary. This is the story, this is worth reading. So the author says, when consulting to a hospital on a major change project, I met an inspirational leader whose work put him at the bottom of the organization hierarchy. The bottom. Do you remember our last general manager? Um, <laughs> Mr. Muckry, uh, he had this concept that he learned in the Navy. Instead of a pyramid, it was an inverted pyramid, and he was on the bottom of the organization, giving the support and putting himself at the very bottom of the organization. Okay, so this person was at the bottom of the organizational hierarchy. He worked in environmental, which is code for the department that mops floors and cleans patients' rooms. This individual pushed a bucket through the wards for a living, yet loved his job. Every day he'd clean one patient room after another, but he'd take time to chat with patients and inquire about their well-being. He cared deeply about the people inhabiting those rooms, and it showed. When the hospital measured patient satisfaction, just like we are going to be measuring customer satisfaction in the coming year, a metric crucial to their financial success and a metric crucial to us getting our budgets passed, 
getting the public to understand we're here to support them. When the hospital measured patient satisfaction, a metric crucial to their financial success, the floors he was assigned to reported the highest scores in the entire hospital. So when you pick up that telephone and you talk to a stakeholder, or you talk to a vendor, or you talk to somebody in another city, or another department here in our city, every word you say is representing the department. And their impression of the department is going to come from that conversation they have with you. And if it's a positive conversation and they hang up the phone and they remember that, if it comes up in conversation with one of their colleagues or somebody else or they meet someone else in the department and say, hey, you know, I just got off the phone with uh, Kimmy Porter, Sergeant Kimmy Porter, and, and you know, she, she had the answer that I needed. It wasn't what I wanted to hear, but she knew exactly what to tell me. And she said it with, you know, it sounded like a smile in her voice. When people get that impression from our encounter, it's invaluable. Okay, just three more. Stay curious. One common characteristic I've mentioned is that they, all leaders are intensely curious and interested in learning about a wide range of topics. Curiosity significantly contributes to engagement at work. Next, mindset matters. A universal characteristic that leaders possess is that they've each adopted a mindset of abundance rather than scarcity. They truly believe that we operate in a world of plenty. Plenty of resources, opportunities, and possibilities for success. As a consequence, they are generous with their time and insights and find that generosity reciprocated by others. How often have you had a dilemma with a project or a challenge with a task and you didn't really know how to solve it or you had an idea but you weren't 100% sure? Say you're a district engineer in Hollywood and you've got someone with 10 years experience there who has been up and down the streets of Hollywood and knows exactly what's going on and you go to that person and you can ask. But you have to have a mindset that it can be accomplished. And you go to that person and say, I want to accomplish this goal. Help me to accomplish this goal. How can I accomplish this goal? Did you ever have to accomplish this goal before? Because you'd be surprised. You know, there's nothing really new under the sun, right? And there's lots of expertise surrounding us. So if you know your communication style, and you know the person you're going to go talk to's communication style, you can get this information in abundance. And lastly, find your tribe. Without exception, each of these individuals, these leaders that were interviewed, has managed to surround themselves with like-minded people who exude positive energy. They have a best friend at work, which research proves makes a difference. Rather than engage with naysayers or waste time trying to convert negative thinkers, these leaders harness the power of the tribe to get things done and celebrate. We have had two employee surveys. We had over 300 people respond this year, which was at least a 10% increase from last year. What was the number one thing that people said they liked about LADOT? You tell me. The staff, the people I work with, my friends, my work family. Know your tribe. So with that, we'll end on a lighthearted note. Some people ask me, well, how do you run your meetings? Well, you know, I run meetings so that they're participatory, so that people have a chance to participate. I do an agenda because I want to cover certain topics, but I ask my staff to edit that agenda and add in what they would like the rest of the group. I have a small team. I have about seven people that I meet with once a week for an hour. That's my staff meeting. So people say, well, how do you control people at a staff meeting? I mean, some people like to talk a lot. You talk a lot, Bruce, so well, how do you deal with other people who talk a lot? Uh, or, you know, how do you stay on topic? You know, some people just, they start talking about one thing, you know, the transit fares or maintenance at the bus depot, and all of a sudden goes from that to tap cards, goes from that to advertise, you know, and forget about the maintenance that you brought up. So how do you do that? Well, there's a few secrets that I use in my job that my staff lets me uh, have some fun at staff meetings. So if somebody's just kind of making up stuff, I just hold up this card, you know. If somebody's complaining too much, you know, I'm really tired of hearing it, I just hold up this card. <laughs> you know, some people just love to go off on a tangent, right? So we have to hold up that card. Or someone gets up and pontificates too long, like I'm doing today, speech, <laughs> right? And then some people just don't stay on topic, so we have a card for that, so we can tell people the same. And occasionally somebody might say something that's not exactly professional, you know, but you want to let them down easily, so we hold up this card. Okay, and then there are some people, I once worked for a, a colonel, and I was getting ready to go brief a general, and he knew I was long-winded, and he said, you know, Bruce, when you go in and you talk with a three-star general, if he asks you what time it is, don't tell him how to build a watch, TMI. 
If you enjoyed today's presentation, please visit us again. Thank you, everyone.